I am Dr. Gargi Roy Goswami uh, in front of you all with a fascinating discussion topic today as the tooth story. I am an interdisciplinary oral health care professional, a geneticist and a general dentist by profession and an academician by passion. Um, as you know that, you know, we all know that uh, most of our body parts are definitely they are formed uh, at birth, even before birth. And as we grow old, they change in physical forms are, I mean, they do not change actually. Uh, like our hands remain uh, the length they attain, legs remain so, uh, but it's not so for teeth. So if we say, yeah the life cycle of a teeth it starts from that uh, when a baby cries uh, when there are eruptions two eruptions or or maybe before that the teething sensation when the child infant starts biting everything then the tooth fairy journey and then the wisdom tooth root canals and ultimately whether it gets decayed and we need to get it out of our mouth and so on and so forth so Today, basically, I will try to give you a trip uh, through the tooth's developmental story. Many of my dental friends here would be knowing about it, but still, I'd like to make it a little interesting with not much spoken of things. All right. So, uh, see, if you see these uh, figures uh, where my cursor is moving, this is where we start with as a human life. How fascinating, right? So, it's just a single cell that is a fertilized egg a single cell and then there are certain stages through which it moves and through days around say uh, 11 to 14 in the embryonic life uh, when uh, when we are in our inside our mother's womb all these things are happening at around these 11 to 14 days of time starts something called as tissue differentiation and if you see here we have uh, there's written ectoderm mesoderm endoderm these are basically the primary germ layers so all that you see i mean all that we see ourselves as um, like as in we are uh, we have hands we have eyes we have legs you know our head is at certain position uh, all these things actually we have muscles nerves whatever you can think of in the human body uh, starts developing from these three layers ectoderm in mesoderm and endoderm so just as you see the names accordingly they are ectoderm is the outermost mesoderm is in the middle and a little more inside is the endoderm so after these also many things goes on and I and slowly the human structure develops all right so but um here i'm not talking about uh, the de uh, developmental story but very specifically how the tooth is developing it's a very interesting story and you know like uh, uh, the other organisms like mainly this is for vertebrate animals or mammals rather uh, we have many similarities so whatever studies uh, through which our knowledge has developed uh, is mostly studied in mouse okay in mice uh, scientists have studied and come up with this fascinating things fine so what i was telling was that um, we were here like at the day 11 to 14 of the embryonic stage tissue differentiation starts when we get ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm so let's move on okay so uh, many things after that happens and let me just uh, come come to the specific point where we talk about tooth germ the germ doesn't mean it's uh, it's a microorganism like bacteria or you know not like that but uh, the layer of or the layer of cells or aggregation of specialized cells which are actually derived from the ectoderm which you just show, saw in the last figure is tooth germ basically these two germ helps eventually forms the tooth so there are two things here so these uh, the aggregation of cells so where from these cells are coming i mean the two germ i say that it is a very uh, it's a specialized kind of cells which uh, which are a cluster of cells and that gives rise to tooth so they are basically um, derived from the ectoderm and also another term that you see here is 
which is underlined is ectomesenchyme of the neural crest okay don't don't uh, get confused but to be very simple a mesenchyme is kind of a another type of tissue called as connective tissue and in most um, uh, like triploblastic animals it is present triploblastic as in uh, like us or other animals uh, like because we have three layers of embryonic uh, tissue like ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm that's why we are triploblastic okay some lower animals are um, some lower animals are well they are kind of uh, diploblastic also i'm not going to that okay fine coming back so mesenchyme is a connect, type of connective tissue and neural crest um, is particularly these are temporary types of cells if you see here uh, this green color in the lower thing lower diagram so uh, this two interact okay so the two germ cells are derived from ectoderm and uh, ectomesenchyme of the neural crest so neural crest cells so what happens is then slowly the tooth germ is organized into three parts again it's called enamel organ the dental papilla and dental sac as you see the name it looks like that only well so each of these three parts there are like these cells will give rise to certain particular uh, cells called ameloblasts this ameloblast is actually what you see the white thing on the teeth that is you know it is enamel so amino ameloblasts are cells which produces enamel so if you see this you have different parts in the tooth so this is the white one is enamel then dentin then pulp and so, uh, it goes on like that so uh, in the another part that is dental papilla of the tooth germ is actually it gives rise to another uh, types of cells called as odontoblasts so which are denting forming cells so this uh, the inner inner part next to them enamels dentin so likewise dental sac or follicle gives rise to three other important entities uh, or types of cells uh, as in cementoblast osteoblast fibroblast so all these have specific function to add on to the structure of the tooth like cement cementum we, we know so this is kind of a cement and that's between the bone and the tooth root and it forms it is formed from the cementoblast and as you see the alveolar bone that's the bone where your uh, where your teeth is sitting is uh, basically formed by this uh, osteoblast and there are certain rope like structures called periodontal ligament uh, which connect the teeth to the particular bone these are formed by fibroblasts so all these cells cementoblast osteoblast fibroblast come from dental sac fine again um, if we see the stages of tooth development uh, it's a very very intricate process right so um, it starts with the thickening of a particular oral epithelium okay oral epithelial tissue and it has several stages stages as in step it helps us to understand also so as you see in this animated is something called as placode it starts the thickening uh, of the epithelium from there in, it goes it, it dives down then we have the initiation stage the bud stage cap stage bell stage this is according uh, to the uh, features that we see under the microscope on the left hand side the photo that you see is exactly what we see under the microscope at different stages of tooth development fine so let us not go much details into it because it's kind of very intricate and uh, it would be out of context for this particular session so moving on uh, now i will tell you some interesting things the genetic signals as you understand as you see as you saw in the previous slide there are so many things happening um, with the with the interactions and with the different stages so one thing we understood that it's a process it's a very very complex process where many things are involved obviously there there is a very tight regulation of uh, uh, genetic expressions and chain of reciprocal interactions and the entire story lies between the interaction between the oral epithelium and underlying mesenchyme that is the, that uh, specialized connective tissue what you saw uh, what we heard about in the earlier slides now um 
this number can change it's almost now that more hundred three more than 300 genes are involved in this uh, you know process so don't worry i'm not going to take, talk about 300 genes but uh, now uh, what happens as i said that there is some interactions you know very uh, complex interactions between or very fine-tuned interactions between oral epithelium and the mesenchyme so what we do is we we started scientists started studying and they found that most genes that regulate the tooth development uh, can be grouped into four major signaling pathways okay signaling pathways just means that the interactions between whatever the interactions have is happening so it, it's complex i know but just trying to make it very very simple so four signaling pathways are mainly called as uh, bmp that or tgf beta that is bone morphogenetic protein then we have wnt uh, Senic hedgehog or SHH and fibroblast growth factor. Now these all are these all signaling pathways are integrated at many levels and they affect the functions of each other. Like as you see in the placard, um, there in the placard itself uh, there will be another uh, another formation of uh, uh, I mean aggregation of cells, some uh, some specialization happening again. Those are called as enamel knots. So they are signaling centers uh, in the dental epithelium and actually they regulate the initiation of the teeth. I mean, uh, the start of the, how the teeth would look like and particularly um, also the uh, enamel knots are again uh, helpful or they regulate how the tooth would look like, the structure. All right. Okay. So the list that you see on the right side don't get worried so we were talking about the four signaling groups that actually uh, gives the genetic signals or that actually are responsible for this intricate process of tooth development right all those bud stage cap stage whatever we know about tooth development so these members of fibroblast growth factors and bo bone morphogenetic protein what they do they are families of protein signals so they are the signals from the oral epithelium to the underlying mesenchyme so what they do to these signals what happens is first the uh, in the developing mouth the place where the incisor or molar or the pattern like we have a pattern of teeth right incisor uh, then we have premolars molars so this patterning of uh, of the it, it's like a pre assumption where the incisor and the molar fields of uh, molars would come up that is done by uh, you know controlled by these and what happens these signals particularly results in the formation of uh, a nested pattern of homeobox genes these are specialized genes again that is in the mesenchyme so first signals are to from the oral epithelium to the mesenchyme now you have homeobox, homeobox genes uh, that are expressed in the mesenchyme and as if it develops a specific code so and it's called homeobox code and that determines the tooth type that means whether it would be an incisor whether it would be a premolar whether it would be the first molar things like that and that that means the manipulation of this homeobox code causes transformations into different types of tooth so as we said that in to molar and the list that you see here on the right hand side is basically the different types of homeobox genes and as you see some are proteins some are secreted as proteins some are transcription factors and some are rich receptors mostly the homeobox uh, genes falls under these two categories uh, like transcription factors they are nothing but they will regulate those um, uh, specific uh, genes all right uh, which would be needed to be activated in this type of intricate process Going to the next is, well, there is another very important signaling which is uh, which is known uh, not very recently, but yes, it is well known, which is called as ectodysplasin EDA. So, it, uh, the tooth number very very important. Like we we how many how many teeth we have permanent? We have thirty two, right? Is do not have third molars. In some people, the incisors. Um, might be missing uh, uh, like lateral incisor in particular so uh, we tell that uh, there is some problem so what's the problem is the problem would, would be most probably 
through this EDS signaling because this is a very specific regulator of teeth and also other organs developing as ectodermal appendages. I, that means that uh, how the teeth is developing from the ectoderm, even other like hair, nails, all these are ectodermal appendages which is developing from the ectoderm. So even the problem with ectodisplacing uh, or EDA signaling will hamper those. But this is very, very specific uh, for the particular, uh, reg it's a very specific regulator of uh, teeth and tooth number. So the tooth initiation involves interaction between the sonic hedgehog and WNT signaling molecules in the oral epithelium. Then you have something called as enamel knot that I was talking about, if you see in the figure. So the shape of the tooth is, uh, you know, uh, uh, determined by this enamel knot and also the number of cusps in molar teeth we what is cusp that uh, you know hill like things that we have in their molar teeth um, are uh, manipulated or are co uh, i mean uh, uh, are controlled by eds signaling so sometimes um, we you some uh, extraordinary teeth we might see uh, while examining any patient so there might be extra cusps so just remember that time that there is something with the EDS signaling. Even the most common um, aberrations, um, you know, there is, if there is missing teeth that we call in, in dental terms, we call it as hypodontia. So all these are uh, due to the in, in number of interactions going on between these signaling pathways that you heard about. And mostly how we came to know about these genes or about the signaling pathways most of the studies are done done have been done in mice model mostly because um, our genome has much resemblance resemblance with the uh, mouse mod with the mouse genome and we can compare and uh, you know we are just com more complex uh, than than those animals but the basic understanding can be obtained so i think that is all for today with the tooth story and i think you enjoy and uh, thank you so much i know uh, i have not covered everything yeah, because i think with one signaling pathway we can talk hours together um, but yeah it was just a snapshot of the typical story of a tooth with uh, how the genetic signals work and how exactly uh, the shape, the number, and the position of our tooth is determined. If you have any specific questions, you can write in the comment or you can get back to me. Uh, thank you. Thank you for joining. So that's all for today.